Okay, today we're going to continue our study of chapter 4, and we're going to carry on to section 4.2, which is linear equations in one variable. And just like we had before, we have three objectives in this lesson, but we're going to break it down. And today we're only going to talk about objective 1, which is to solve linear equations. So let's talk about exactly what that means. First off, a linear equation in one variable x is an equation that can be written in the form of ax plus b equals 0. And really what I want you to get out of this is when you look at an equation, if the variable has an exponent of 1, it is a linear equation. So I want you to write over here, variable, uh, the exponent of the variable equals 1. That's how you know you have a linear equation, and you will always solve them this way. Um, Next, we're going to talk about solving that equation in x, and that means you're going to find all the values of x that give you a true statement when you substitute it into the equation. Those values or numbers are called solutions or roots of your equation. And then you need to be familiar with what equivalent equations are. They are just equations that have the same solution set. So 4x plus 12 equals 0 and x equals negative 3 are equivalent equations because x equals negative 3 makes this a true statement and it makes that a true statement which means they have the same solution set. Okay so two properties we're going to use to solve our equations. One we have the addition property of equality. If you start off with an equation a equals b then I can add the same thing to both sides of the equation so I added c to both sides and that doesn't change the solution set. So these two are equivalent equations. Likewise, in the multiplication property of equality, if a equals b, the same non-zero number can be multiplied by both. So I can do a times c equals b times c, and that doesn't change the solution set. So these two are equivalent equations also. So I have some examples that you can refer back to, solving an equation by addition, subtraction, okay, those are really using the addition property of equality because when you subtract it's always the same thing as saying you're adding the opposite. So that's why these two are both referred to as the addition and these two are both referred to as multiplication. This last problem we're going to actually concentrate on the next lesson so we're really only working on these first three types today. So, the steps to solving a linear equation. First off, you want to simplify the algebraic expression on each side by removing the grouping symbols and combining your like terms. Then, you want to collect all the variable terms on one side of your equation and all the constants or numerical terms on the other side of your equation. That is, you do that generally by addition and subtraction. Then, when you isolate the variable and solve it, you're going to do that part by multiplication and division. So, think about it when you first do it. Step two is involving addition and subtracting when you're collecting the variables on one side, constants on the other. And then when you isolate that variable completely, you're going to either multiply or divide. Then, you want to check your proposed solution into the original equation. Now, the go back to that original one. That's where you're going to find mistakes if you've made any. So, let's look at an example. We have this equation here. Okay, how do we know it's an equation? Because there's an equal sign right here. We have to remove these grouping symbols. So, I'm going to use the distributive property to give me 2x minus 8, and then I'm going to carry down the rest of the equation. So 2x minus 8 equal, minus 5x equals negative 5. And then I'm going to simplify this side. So 2x and 5x are like terms. So 2x minus 5x is negative 3x. And then I carry down the rest that was not simplified. Now, collecting variables and terms. Okay, as I just said, that's where the addition and subtraction comes in. So... If I have my original equation, negative 3x minus 5, here's a variable, here's a constant, here's a constant. So I want to move the constant over there, and that gives me all the variables on one side and all the constants on the other. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Negative 5 plus 8 
is 3, and then I carry down my 3x. This, of course, is 0. All right, so once you have that, and you have just a variable on one side and numbers on the other, if you have any coefficients, then you want to do the opposite. In this case, we're multiplying these two terms, or these two factors. So I'm going to divide by negative 3 and get an answer of x equals negative 1. Step 4, check the proposed solution. Uh, here's my original equation. When you check it, what matters to me most is that you show me that you plug it in. And if you can put that in your calculator and tell me, show me that, you know, that equals negative 5, you can just put your check mark. If you want to go through and be really good at solving equations, then you'll work through it and find out this statement is true. So that means that the solution set is negative 1. Now, if you come down and you put it back in and it's not negative 5 equal negative 5, that's the way that you find out you've done something wrong. If you need help, you can't figure it out, bring it up to me, and I will be happy to help you find that mistake. Um, the other thing is, your answers will be negative 1, x equals, or you can write it. You can either write it with the set symbols, set notation, or you can write x equals negative 1. Either one is acceptable. Okay, one more example. This time I have grouping symbols on both sides of my equation, so I'm going to use the distributive property. This is going to give me 2 times x, which is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is minus 6. Carry down, carry down. Minus 3 times x is negative 3x. And minus 3 times 2 is negative 6. So that's how I'm getting 2x minus 6. Carry down, carry down. Minus 3x and then negative 3 and 2 is negative 6. This is where a lot of people forget to distribute this negative over both terms inside here. Now I look for like terms on each side. So these two are like terms. That's going to give me negative 23. These two are like terms. 13 minus 6 gives me 7. Okay. Um, so all I did was simplify on each side. I didn't add to both sides or anything of that sort. When I'm trying to collect the variables on one side, okay, this is where we're going to be adding to both sides of our equation. So first off, I'm going to add 3x to both sides, just because I want to collect the variables on the left. And you can go either way. And 2x plus 3x, of course, is 5x. I'm going to carry down my negative 23 or my minus 23. And that becomes 0, and 7 is carried down. You should be able to look back at this and see that these are opposites, and they will cancel. And then i got to remove my constant over to this side, so I'm going to add 23 to both sides, and that's going to give me 5x equals 30. So now that we have that isolated, the next thing we're going to do is the last step, which is multiplication or division. In this case, we're going to divide both sides by 5 and find out that x equals 6. Now, in this problem, x equals 6 is a positive number, so I didn't put the 6 in parentheses. You don't have to if it's a positive number. If it's a negative number, you absolutely must put it in parentheses or you will make mistakes. So, simplifying each side, I will find out that negative 11 equals negative 11, so the solution is x equals 6. Solution is not a negative 11. The solution is what I got back up here. This is how I checked it to make sure that is a true statement so I know that I got the right answer and x equals 6. So I also want you to write out here, this is a true. Just write true out to the side of it so that you know that you got the right answer. If you have any questions, please come see me.